Hey guys, welcome back to Topher Drives and welcome to the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580. This is the all new electric S-Class from Mercedes-Benz and I'm super excited to take you out on a evening drive in this big flagship electric sedan tonight. We'll take a look at all of this different ambient lighting. As you can see, it's doing like a total light show in front of me right now. There's a ton of different cool settings and I think this will just be a cool vibe tonight to take this EQS out on the road. We'll talk about the EQS, what it's like to drive, what it's been like to live with for the past couple of days. And then uh, we'll talk about some other stuff because this is Topher Drives, this is Comfort Mode, and you know, sometimes we talk about things other than cars. But today's episode will be a little bit about cars as well because we're gonna talk about why us Rust Belt people never drive our cars and why cars when if you're from the south you come up north why half the cars you see on the road are just completely falling apart and, and rusted out and why evs may be a good solution to that so um but mainly <laughs> we're gonna talk about the eqs today and uh, before we can do that though let's hop out and take a walk around this thing as you can see it in all of its glory now kind of a controversial design on this eqs it kind of just looks like an egg but it's got some cool lighting up front. We've got a long strip LED right above the grill. And, um, you know, when this car came out, I thought, oh, you know, that's a pretty unique design. You know, no one else has really done anything like this in the electric car game. But then I started looking at photos of old, like, second-gen Priuses and older Honda Insights. And a lot of these, like, eco cars that have to be slippery, have to be eco-friendly to get as much range or as much fuel economy as possible, they all kind of have this egg shape. And these... EQ cars from Mercedes are kind of following that same philosophy and um, I thought maybe this EQS would look pretty unique on its own but honestly the EQS SUV, the EQE, the EQB, whatever else they have now there seems like uh, Mercedes is coming out with these electric cars faster than I can keep track of them. They all kind of look the same um, but this one I think is my favorite because I love a good S-Class and technically this is the electric S-Class. We drove the S580 last year and it was fabulous and um, you know I don't love Admittedly, I don't love this EQS as much as just the regular S580, but um, it's still pretty cool, and I still want to show you guys some of, its, some of its features. So it is a hatchback. It has a ton of room back here. As you can see, this interior is very white. I think technically it's like a light gray, but um, I think they just call it gray because the term white for an interior can kind of scare people. But then once you actually sit down on this thing, you realize how worth it it is to get this interior. It does feel a little bit like you're sitting in a lab when you're in here because everything is white. Kind of like a test lab, I guess I should say. Which isn't a bad thing. I kind of like the vibes in this interior. And of course, being that this is a Mercedes, the ambient lighting in this car is stunning. We've got ambient lighting everywhere. The rear passengers get their own little tablet here, which doesn't appear to be, oh, now it's powering on, okay. It's just like a little Samsung tablet that you can uh, control ambient lighting, sun shades, rear seat massage, all that sort of thing. It actually looks like it's updating. Oh, and the car timed out and shut off. The car will only like idle for five minutes or so before it completely shuts off, but the ambient lighting stays on. I've got this on red moon right now, so it cycles through blue, red, green, and purple. And uh, it's just so stunning. We've got tons of ambient lighting on the door panels. We've got it on the sides of the seats around the entire 56 inch dashboard display there. It's like one big piece of glass that goes all across. Probably the most striking feature of this car in my opinion. Little console back here. And uh, well, of course we've got it in the footwells as well. So let's go ahead and hop up front. Of course I could walk you through all of the luxuries in this car, but I think we should really get this thing out on the road. Take a look at all of the different ambient lighting in here. Because the way Mercedes is make you feel at night is really unmatched by any other manufacturer. You can be a BMW fanboy, you can be an Audi fanboy, but you have to recognize that Mercedes does it right when it comes to interior ambiance and ambient lighting because nobody has anything that looks like this, at least not in any cars that I've driven. Even the Rolls-Royce Cullinan didn't get close to any of these um, Mercedes cars. Quite a bit of storage up here in the front. We've got a big place down here with a strap. I hope you guys can see that on camera, but it allows you to secure something down under the console area. A couple different consoles, cup holders, and I've got my phone there on the wireless charger. Glove box over here, power opening, 
and um, the passenger actually gets their own screen. We actually won't get into that because I like this calm display for the passenger screen. It kind of reminds me of like Star Wars because you're all of these Mercedes badges are coming at you constantly and it's just a really cool calm screen. This middle screen can get a little bit overwhelming at times because it is massive and sometimes admittedly when you're in the driver's seat and you have Apple CarPlay going, you can't see, oops, take me here. You can't see this side if you're either the, where your apps are. So a little bit awkward. We'll actually talk about that a little bit when we get on the road on some of the awkward ergonomic things in this car, but let's go ahead and restart. <laughs> the word special is so overused, but I really do think that this car strives to make you feel important. Maybe I should say that. Wants you to have some very unique moments um, in this cabin. And before we get on the road, let's take a look here at some of this different ambient lighting. So right now we're on Red Moon. This one's called Ocean Blue. Wow. This one is called Burning Blue, so we've got some yellow in there as well. We were just on Red Moon. There's that one. Miami Rose, yes. Miami Rose is a beautiful one. Venice Pink, also a good one. Jungle Green. Malibu Sunset. You know, this one looks prettier in the regular S-Class, in my opinion. We've got Chrome Shine, which I think is just white, maybe some light blue. And Ultramarine. So Ultramarine is actually my favorite. I always pick Ultramarine in every Mercedes-Benz that I'm driving. I think it is stunning. You can also have Monochrome, which just is a solid color, which looks the craziest in red. Look how wild this looks. <laughs> You're just like engulfed in sport mode. I like to have multicolor though, because it gives you a cool animation. We'll start today's drive on Red Moon, but then we'll cycle through so you guys can see some of the um, other options. We do have brightness turned all the way up. So hopefully that is okay on your end. And I'm going to flip over my audio recording device so no light gets through from that. So we can just have our raw EQS light in here. But okay, um, enough farting around here in the parking lot. Let me put the steering wheel up so you guys can see the cluster. Move my seat forward slightly. We've, like any Mercedes, our seat controls are on the door. course, being that this is an EV, we have one pedal driving in this car, which works pretty nice. And it's a good thing that it works nice because the brake pedal on this car is less than, well, how do we be nice about this? I don't want to just say that it's shit, but it's really not a great brake pedal. And uh, luckily the one pedal driving kind of mitigates having to use it. You can adjust how much recuperation you want with the paddles which I appreciate on electric cars, being able to kind of adjust that on the fly. But what I appreciate more is when you just have a on off switch for your one pedal driving and the car remembers that you like to drive with one pedal. You don't have to get in and adjust it every single time you go to drive. Unfortunately here in the EQS, the only way I found is to um, adjust your recuperation every time. You can leave one pedal on, you don't have to turn that on every time. But as far as having strong recuperation, you've got to touch that negative paddle when you get into the car if you want it to remember that. But just take in the ambiance as the uh, ambient lighting cycles through all of its different colors. It's such a cool vibe in here. I sound like such a Gen Z or saying that, but I am a Gen Z, so I'm allowed to say that. So let's talk about some of the weird uh, ergonomic things in here. I did take some engineering classes in high school, so I know what the word ergonomics means. <laughs> and um, uh, it's just kind of strange, like the seating position. So you have kind of two choices. You can either sit low down and get your head away from the ceiling because the roof line's pretty low in this car. We talked earlier about this EQ design and kind of the car being swoopy and slippery so it can be as efficient as possible. But in turn, that means that your roof line is a little bit lower than the average car. So I like to sit a little bit lower down, but the problem here in this car is that the dashboard and the steering wheel sits so high up. Sure, you can adjust the steering wheel down a little bit, but the actual dashboard itself sits up so high that I feel like I'm a grandma in a 78 T-Bird going down the road and I can't see what I'm doing. Um, it isn't that bad. I can mostly see out of the car. Um, 
but it, it, it's kind of like a weird, you have to find like the nice in between, which honestly doesn't really exist. But uh, you can either sit high, be able to see out of the car with your head being close to the ceiling. I'm five foot 11, so, um, you know, I'm like, I feel like I'm a very average sized person. But yeah, a little bit of a weird seating position, which is kind of disappointing to be honest. Because when I think of an S-Class, I feel like it should be just the most comfortable thing in the world. Like I said, I've driven the S580 the, of, of the current generation, and it is fabulous. I emerged from that car thinking, I never want to drive anything else ever again, because this is it. It's the perfect daily driver. And I was hoping maybe the EQS would kind of go above that, because I like electric cars for daily drivers. Sometimes electric cars can be even more serene. And in some ways, this car is. But as far as a being comfortable in the driver's seat, and even in the back seat which I, I should have mentioned while we were back there, the roof line is kind of low and swooping back there as well. My six foot one tall dad sat back there earlier and he was actually fine, but he was sitting down in the seat a little bit. And I think that's probably just about as tall as uh, you could be sitting in the back, about six one or six two. So if you are Ed Bolian or Jeremy Clarkson, you'd have some issues in the back seat and probably also in the front seat of the EQS. But if you can get past a lot of the weird ergonomic things in this car, it is a really unique experience in here. It's the first EQ model by Mercedes-Benz to be introduced to the US market. Of course, now we have a couple more, but this was the first one and it's still technically the flagship car. There is the EQS SUV, which is a silly name for a vehicle, but that would be a little bit bigger because it's basically just like the GLS um, EV. But uh, yeah, this thing is, I mean, look at this, the way that this ambient lighting rotates. And we'll actually go ahead and switch this now to, I kind of want to switch it to Miami Rose, or sorry, Malibu Sunset. We'll do Miami Rose later, but Malibu Sunset is what I want right now. If you guys can hear, I mean, it's pretty dang quiet. This car's running on some snow tires right now, so um, a little bit louder than it would be normally, but it's still so serene and proper in here. This car also has rear wheel steering. We've seen this on the regular S-Class for a number of years now. It's cool that they brought it over to the EQS. So let's put this thing actually into sport mode real quick and we'll talk numbers as we do a little sprint up to 45. So this is powered by two electric motors and combined power output is 516 horsepower and 631 foot-pounds of torque. We'll get around this corner and uh, we'll give her the old electric car acceleration, I guess, instant torque. So here we go, we're going 25. <laughs> the only way I can describe that noise is the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. You know, like when it opens its mouth and it's like right? <laughs> That's pretty cool though. You got to admit, they give you a couple of different sound choices. Actually, we can get off of Demogorgon mode and go to a different one. I don't know what the other one's called. Oh God. Let me get through the roundabout here. Such quick steering in this car as we Demogorgon out. Uh, driving, we need vehicle, sound experience. So right now we're on Vivid Flux, but we can also go to Silver Waves. You get a lot more deceleration noise there with Silver Waves. Um, in Comfort Mode though, it'll calm it down quite a bit. Sport Mode really elevates everything, but we'll hang out here in Comfort Mode. And pretty much steer this thing with your pinky. I mean, look how light the steering is. Pinky, 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 pinky. Light and precise, though. I do. I'm, I am a fan of steering in these higher end cars. There's almost like a luxurious feel to steering, and if you get it right, if it's just light and precise enough to steer this big ass car around, then you've done it right, in my opinion. So we'll get we'll we'll trickle in things about the EQS as we go along, but I wanted to make this video now talking about kind of like what it's like driving cars up here in the north because, well, I'm filming this video on October 30th. I think it's, yeah, it's the 30th because tomorrow's Halloween. So tomorrow's the last day of October. It's getting to 
time in the season where all of us northerners have to put all of our fun cars away. And I don't know if like some people understand why we do that. I mean, obviously when it's snowing out, you don't want to be driving around in a car with summer tires because it's very unsafe. You slide, spin out, whatever you may do. But honestly, the biggest reason for me, the reason that I don't drive well, any of my cars in the snow is because of salt. Here in Michigan, they put so much salt on the road that mixes in with the snow and in turn freezes and sticks to your car and stays on it for, you know, five months out of the year. It just absolutely ruins vehicles. And um, I don't know if you can see, but that GMC there has got a bunch of rust holes in the bumper and everything. And it really is a shame that this method is still used because as far as I know, like other places that it snows, they use other methods to to kind of ease the driving experience in the snow like i think up north in uh, the upper peninsula in michigan i think that they just used they use sand and there are other places that use beet juice so like their roads just turn purple during winter how fun is that but nope we use salt and it destroys everything not only does it destroy cars it also destroys clothing it destroys shoes why is this person merging? See, here's a problem, okay? This is why cars should just be self-driving at this point. This person in their Sienna, we're on a huge long entrance ramp, okay? Yeah, so that just makes like everything super unsafe when you're that person merging on the highway going 40 miles per hour. Uh, anyways, the CQS has a really good autonomous, well, not fully autonomous, but it'll drive for you, it'll steer for you. And no, I don't hog the left lane. My exit is in a mile up here on the left. I hate people that hog the left lane. But I just got to chill over here until it's time for me to exit. But, uh, yeah. Nice and quiet here in the EQS. We are gaining slightly on this conversion van. What do we got here? Hey, oh, it's an ST, I thought it was an RS. It's not. Lots of hazards today. This is, uh, I suppose it's only fair in a video where I'm mentioning Michigan roads that we merge onto the highway going 39 behind a minivan. Anyways, though, we're away from that now. Just be able to chill a little bit here on this road for a second. I mean, this is what this car is for, you know, eating up these highway miles. Range on this car is about 340 miles, I think, if I'm right on that. If I'm not, well, then I'll cut this part out. But I think range is right around mid-300s, which is good. If you're an executive businessman and you have a bit of a commute, then the EQS is good for you. Anyways, though, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm taking insurance off of all of my cars on November 1st, so... Well, I'll keep the ML55 on, but the ML55 is in a million pieces right now, so probably won't be super smart actually to keep it on anything, but I have high hopes for my buddy Keone from Caps Garage to get it finished up so I've got an emergency winter beater if we don't have a car or something, I can, I can drive the ML55. So last week I actually sold one of my cars and I haven't let anybody know, I haven't posted anything anywhere about it yet, but I did sell my uh, E46, my 364,000 mile E46 is gone. I sold it to my buddy Dane, and um, well, it's gonna be his winter beater. He's got an X5 that had not catastrophic failure, but every warning light's on, and it doesn't, in turn, doesn't have traction control or anti-lock brakes or stability control or anything that you need to drive in the snow, so he, uh, said, Chris, can I please buy your E46? And I said, sure you can. So I sold it to him, but don't worry, I still have six cars. I still have the ML55 AMG. I still have the W126 S-Class, which is waiting on a windshield currently. Um, I have the Cayman S, I have the Cobalt SS, I have the Lexus IS300 five-speed manual, and I have my newly acquired M Roadster, which um, actually the M Roadster, the power steering reservoir, exploded the other day while it was sitting. So that's a cool, Cool little BMW moment there, but yeah, that was that was fun to, to walk into the garage and see the M Roadster with a big puddle of fluid under it. 
<sighs> but anyways, I think, <laughs> how can we loop this back into the EQS? I think that maybe electric cars are going to be less of a burden on people in the north in the future because like less things will rust out on these cars, right? But then you have to think, well, will the salt and everything like mess up the batteries? So that'll be an interesting thing to see. But I just know that on a lot of gas cars, you know, you have to worry about like exhaust components rusting out and other things under the car that just like rust, like the subframe that holds the motor in can just like rust to pieces and uh, make the entire car unsafe to drive. So maybe like the way that some of these newer cars are designed will mitigate some of that. If anything, electric cars will just be disposable. So you just throw them away and buy another one, right? Isn't that the whole point? I always wonder what like, what are junkyards gonna look like in 50 years? Like they're just gonna be riddled with Mustang Mach-E's and Nissan Leafs and Kia EV6's that like just have no life left in their battery packs. And what is value gonna be like on a used electric car that doesn't have its battery capacity? For me, it's like, it's like a phone, right? Like I have an iPhone, I just, well, I have a new iPhone now, but my phone before it was like an iPhone 10, 10S, whatever. And after two years using that phone, the ba the capacity on the battery was only like 80%. So you figure it's probably gotta be the same for cars, right? Like charging and discharging the battery a bunch, like it puts wear on the battery and it means that you lose range. So like, what is that gonna look like for these cars in the future? I don't even know. Are they just gonna be junk? I mean, I guess we'll see. It's a weird, ass time in the industry right now and I really don't know what to expect. In some ways I'm grateful that I'm like growing up right now in this in this time and being able to experience kind of like the the turn of the industry cars like the EQS. Like this is a pretty important car guys. Like this is this is a luxury flagship sedan that's fully electric, you know? Like it's a pretty pretty big deal. So in some ways it's cool, but in other ways I'm kind of sad because all of the internal combustion engine cars are going away. And you know, as an enthusiast, my real heart and soul is with hot compacts and big V8s and things that are just going away. I mean, even Mercedes is switching over their AMG cars from V8s to twin charged hybrid four cylinder things. So I don't know, it's just kind of a change. Let's put on some green lights for our last little bit here. Switch up the vibe slightly. That'll just about wrap it up. I don't want to bore you guys, and if you've stuck around for this long, I appreciate it. I'm really scared that one day I'm going to run out of things to talk about in comfort mode. In fact, today I texted Tedward and I was like, uh, Tom, I don't know what to talk about today. He's like, well, what about like snow driving? It's about that, that time of the year where you get to like winter and rust and everything. So I was like, oh yeah, that, that can tie in with, with EVs. We'll just kind of, you know, hop around the whole uh, snow and salt subject, but any suggestions that you guys have, preferably not about me. I mean, if it's about me, that's fine. I just don't really want to talk about myself every single one of these episodes, which today I feel like I really didn't, but well, let's do one last acceleration here. The silver wave one kind of sounds like, uh, like a V12, like an old, like S65 AMG. That's pretty sweet. I appreciate that. All right, we're ending this video on the Target parking lot because I don't know where else to end it. And <laughs> it's just, there's security cameras right here. I'll park under that, I guess. Do I need anything from Target while I'm here? Oh, we'll see. Super easy to park. I love the rear wheel steering on this car. It's really convenient. Okay, we're good. We'll park it. Okay. Well, that'll just about wrap it up here for the EQS. If you have any questions about the EQS, if you have suggestions for comfort mode, suggestions for the channel in general, um, let me know. And I also wanted to thank you guys because Topher Drives just hit monetization threshold. So I'm able to monetize my videos now, which is pretty sweet. Obviously all the content that I create for the Topher and Daily Motor and Winding Road, that's all paying the bills, but it'll be cool to uh, have a fourth stream here with Topher Drives and maybe be able to build this channel into something really cool. And um, I just, I really look forward to the future. So thank you guys so much. Hey, you've forgotten your phone. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. And um, 
yeah, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for supporting Topher Drives, for supporting the Topher Daily Motor and Winding Road, and just making this whole thing become a reality for me. Growing up, I never thought that I'd be able to do something this cool in my 20s, and um, I really am just like living the dream of what my younger self thought was the perfect job. So can't thank you enough, and um, if you keep watching, give me suggestions. What can I do to make this channel what you guys want to see? Check out this taillight design. Wow. It looks like a Taco Bell uh, cinnamon twist, kind of. Okay. Well, that'll wrap it up for the EQS and a little bit of whatever else I was babbling about. <laughs> but again, thank you guys for everything, and um, I'll see you real soon in the next video. Take care.